streamer fly in a class that I'm doing on Carrie St uh, Stevens streamer patterns. This is called the Black Max. It is a, a wonderful fly to tie. Uh, I really enjoy just all the classic components to these flies and how they're put together. Um, once you start to master them, they're really not that difficult to, to tie, but they really are just a lot of fun. This all, fly also fishes very well uh, around here. This is a size six, no, my mistake. This is a size four hook. Um, so you end up with bait fish pattern that's two, maybe two and a quarter inches long, two and a half inches long, depending on how long you make the tail back here. Um, but it is just a, a wonderful fly to fish and, um, and even more fun to tie. So that's the Black Max and we'll go ahead and get started tying. Mustad R79 hook. This is a 9x long hook. All of the traditional Carrie Stevens patterns all have very, very long shanked hooks on them. I'm going to debarb this and I'm going to start out by using a flat wax nylon. This is just a white flat wax nylon because the body of this is a red floss. We want to use a white thread so that we don't darken up the floss. I'm going to attach this a couple of eye lengths behind the eye of the hook. On most of your Carrie Stevens patterns, the heads are a little bit longer. Actually, a lot of the uh, traditional long streamer patterns like this, the heads are a little bit longer because there's so much going on. So I'm going to attach my thread a little bit further behind the eye of the hook and then I'm going to put down a nice base layer of thread along the hook shank. I want to keep these in fairly close touching turns. I'm not that concerned about them being flat right at the moment. But this will basically help to uh, provide a base, nice base for a level uh, body. I'm going to tie in the tag here. I'm using a gold and silver mylar tinsel. This is a Danville. Uh, silver on one side, gold on the other. This is a size 14. And that is because I'm not using something wider, which potentially you could, but I want to um, get a number of wraps back down to the end of the shank and back up for the tag. I'm going to tie this in with the gold side out. And I'm going to attach this on the far side of the hook shank. I can pull the mylar so that I have just a little bit sticking out. And then I'll put in four or five wraps just to anchor that down. And then I can go ahead and put the tag in. When I start the tag, I'll flip the hook over. And I'll start wrapping. It flips over to the silver side. I just want to put touching turns in here. I'm going to get about seven to eight touching turns. So I go on down the hook shank and then work my way back up. And once I have that tag in place, I'll tie that in with a couple of turns. You want to try and minimize how many wraps of thread you're putting in and not putting them all in the same space. I should say in the same spot on the hook shank because we want to try and minimize how much of a bump we're going to end up having here. Now the wizard does not have a tail, so I'm going to use the same mylar tinsel size 14 for the rib on this and I'm going to go ahead and attach that right here. Again I'm going to pull that down so that I have just a little bit sticking out. That'll get anchored in a little bit more as we wrap our body on. But because the tinsel is so thin, I don't have to worry about it creating a bump back here. I'm going to use some red Danville four-strand floss for the body on this. I'm going to 
get out about 10 to 12 inches of this and I'll use all four strands. This I'm going to anchor as well under the thread on my side of the hook shank and I'm going to pull the ends back down so that the ends here end up just the end of the body and up into the head space a little bit. Now I can start wrapping this in. I want to put nice touching turns in here. I'm going to go ahead and flatten the thread out a little bit. I'm using this flat wax nylon mostly because it's a larger diameter thread and it helps me to be able to get from one end of the, this long shank to the other a little quicker. So with my floss anchored down to the hook shank, I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping on the floss, stroking it out here to get all the fibers all going in the same direction. My first wrap kind of leans backwards a little bit because I want it to cover up any thread wraps right at the very back end. Now each wrap going forward is going to overlap the other one, so I end up with a nice smooth body for the fly. body anchored in, I'll go ahead and start applying the rib. Generally you want anywhere from 10 to 12 wraps on the rib. It's more important that you have evenly spaced wraps than it is the number of wraps. But if you want to get a certain number, just keep in mind that when you get right about here, halfway down the hook shank, you should be about halfway through however many wraps you're thinking about putting on. Just keep them nice and even spaced, work your way on up to the thread. Now I intentionally tied these off inside the headspace here because at this stage I'm going to attach a 6-0 black Danville thread to finish this fly off. This allows me to set up a nice base of material and thread right behind the eye of the hook for building out the head of this fly. I found that if I terminate the body a couple of eye lengths back behind, sometimes I'll end up with a wider diameter right here where the body is than the head here. So some of my initial materials, when I tie them in, tend to get pushed off at an odd angle. So I basically have started to level off the head area using the body of the fly as kind of an, an underbody, as it were. 
and this helps to keep the materials streamlined a little bit better on the resulting fly. So now we are ready to tie in the underbelly of some white bucktail and our throat and then our underwing and the wing on the wizard. So the next step in tying the wizard is to put the underbelly in. We're just using some white bucktail for the underbelly. Not all of the uh, Carrie Stevens patterns have an underbelly to them or even have an underwing, but many of them do. So I went ahead and clipped some bucktail and already put it in the hair stacker. You don't have to be so concerned of having a nice clean trim edge. As a matter of fact, I like to have them a little bit more tapered or, or uh, uneven. I think it just gives a more realistic appearance. You want to go ahead and peel out any hairs that are kind of going off wild. I like to tie the bellies in so that the tips are either just inside the gap of the hook or actually just a little bit longer past the gap of the hook. I'll anchor that right on the underside here. Pinch and roll my fingers forward using a pinch loop right there. I'll tie those in. Make certain I have everything right on the underside. Sometimes they'll get pulled up to my side because of the tension of the thread. Take a look at that and make certain everything is right on the underside there. And that all looks good. I can go ahead and cut the excess bucktail off. We'll lash down these butt ends, just tidy this up a little bit, make this still nice and smooth and secure for the throat of the fly. The throat on the wizard is made from some white hackle fibers. I'm going to use some schloppen here, basically taking a nice uh, schloppen feather that has a nice wide uh, butt section to it here. I'll peel off the fluff and any fibers that are, that are too fuzzy they don't need. And then for the throat, it, the easiest way to do this is just on both sides of this feather. I'm going to get some of the fibers sticking out perpendicular like this. And once I have those all nice and perpendicular to the stem so that all the tips are nice and evened up. I'll just peel those right off. I'll set those down on the tying table and then do the same thing on the other side. There are different techniques and uh, some that for some flies I employ different techniques in doing this but this is generally the quickest and easiest way and once I have the other side I will match those up on my tying table, collect those in my hand, kind of bring them together. And this just kind of ensures that they'll have a little bit of a curve to them like this and that they'll, they'll be a little broader and not just a, a clump of hackle fibers. I'll measure this. I like my throats to be about halfway down the, the uh, body. And again, securing that underneath here pinching and rolling my fingers up, bring my thread straight up, and come on back four or five turns to secure that, and then I'll take a look and see if everything is nice and straight on the bottom, which it looks so I can then remove the excess. Yep. Getting some of that mixed in there. Just 
Take your time. If the materials aren't quite cooperating the way you want to, just take your time with it. You can get too hung up if you got one that's a little stray here like this because more than likely when we wrap the head in here that will get wrapped down. So I'll bring my thread forward to tidy that up a little bit and that'll get lashed down. I'm not concerned about making the head right at the moment as much as keeping the length of the head and more or less providing a nice platform for the wing. By tidying all of that up, I have a nice smooth platform right here for tying in the wing. Now the wing is comprised of two components. There is a under uh, wing which is made up of peacock curl. And I simply selected six peacock curls and uh, to tie those in, you want to try and uh, even up those tips a little bit. They don't have to be perfect. If you end up with seven uh, or eight, that's up to you. I generally like six. I think these work a little bit better if uh, some of these materials are just a little bit sparser. But once you get those tips evened up, we'll place this up here. The wing is actually going to stick out maybe about a third of a shank length to half a shank length behind the bend of the hook. Um, I've seen these tied in with wings that barely go past the bend of the hook and some that are, that are way past the bend of the hook. So I generally go about, you know, a third the length of the, the shank of the hook behind. And the underwing is going to be just a little bit shorter than that. So with a pinch wrap, I'll secure those on, making certain that they haven't twisted over to the other side or rolled. Sometimes they will get a little compressed here and kind of go off at a cocked angle up and that's fine. More or less you want to try and keep all of this as lateral as possible. Cut away the excess and once again I will tidy this up so that I have a nice tying platform for the wing on the wizard. Wing on the Wizard is made up of two black hackles. And these, I use a uh, saddle hackle from a, a Whiting American cape. But there are two black hackles flanked by two yellow hackles. And then there's a cheek of jungle cock. So this is the wing. I've already pre-made this uh, and pre-assembled it. There's a number of ways you can put these in. I could take the two black hackles that you see here and I could put both of those up and tie them in and then tie the yellows on the outside. And then once those are secure, tie in the, uh, the jungle cock for the cheek if I want to. However, I have found that I like to pre-make these. So I have basically glued, put some glue on the black hackle and put the yellow on, let that set up, and then put the cheek on. What it does is it helps when you tie this in to keep this from rolling off to the side like this or even cockeyed like that. Um, it just helps, it makes it a lot easier when you tie these in. Before I actually tie those in though, I leave these pieces on the ends as uh, little handles when I'm gluing them together. But I'm gonna trim those off and I'll trim those to the length here that is the head of the fly. So this is all assembled and ready to go. I also like to tie mine in flanked on each side of the fly, so I'll separate these and bring them down to the sides of the fly like this and then bring them together, just bringing those hackles right up near the top. Make certain that your tips are all lined up. Sometimes they can get a little bit out of alignment. And then we'll put in about six or seven wraps to secure that and just see how it sits. That is sitting pretty straight. It's not cockeyed anyway. You can push on these a little bit. And, and wrap uh, and, and angle those off a little bit. You want to try and have 
I like to have the hackles going down along the length of the shank a little bit more. You tie them right up on top of the hook shank, they tend to cock out at an upward angle. So that's why I take and, and kind of separate them before I tie them in so that I can get them going down a little bit along the shanks of the hook. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's much better. The other thing you want to make certain when you're tying these in is that the last few wraps are going to be right up tight against that wing so it looks like the whole wing just comes right out from under. You don't want to have any of these uh, bare stems sticking out of the head. So with all of that in place, I'll wrap forward, securing the butt ends of the stems of the feather. Going back just a few wraps to tidy that up. Then we'll come up to the eye of the hook and we'll start shaping the very nose and the head of the fly. Very easy to put in more wraps when you're creating the head of the fly than you need. You just want to try and smooth all that off and make certain that you have everything covered. So if I had any white material between these wraps, I just want to make certain that they're covered and that I have the head all the way wrapped back. I don't have any other thread wraps from the throat or anything sticking out. To make the head of the fly, I'll go ahead and flatten out my thread. I'll put in about a 9 or 10 turn whip finish with my thread flattened. I have found that this really, really helps to um, level out the head a little bit so that when I start to put the finish on, it doesn't have quite such a job uh, to fill in the gaps. me a nice smooth head. Cut my thread off with my scissors. Double check that my wing and everything still looks good, which it does. I'll use some fly tight as my initial head cement and this will soak into those threads and just kind of fuse the head all together. And then once that is dried, I will start to put some uh, penetrator hard as hull on that to seal that up real good and then I'll top that off with a coating of black lacquer. So as soon as that is dried up enough, we'll go ahead and get some hardest hull on there and um, then our wizard will be finished. So our fly tight's all set up and we're ready for the next two coats of um, head cement on here to start sealing this up. Normally, if I'm going to put a black lacquer, um, I'm just using the Wopsy black lacquer here. So I'm going to put that on as the finish coat on here. I'm going to put two coats of Hardest Hull Penetrator on here to help soak in a little bit, but mostly just to fill in the valleys between the thread enough so that the black lacquer just goes on and it's nice and smooth when it levels out. However, for the sake of the video, I'm going to go ahead and stick with some regular old hardest hull because when I put this on here, it will give you um, a glimpse of what the fly will look like once the black lacquer and everything has been put on here. So you'll actually get to see uh, what the wizard's going to look like when it actually is finished. You could also put a coating or two of the regular hardest hull if that's all you've got on here and then top that off with some black lacquer, which is probably what I'll end up doing with this fly.
if you've watched any of my other videos doing any of the wet flies or some of the other Carrie Stevens or even the bucktail streamers, uh, I've talked about this process and the fact that when I put all this hard as hull on here right now, it will look and appear nice and smooth and glossy as it levels itself out. But this initial coat, when it dries, will shrink down to those thread wraps and they'll all actually stick out and you'll be able to see them so it's going to take more layers but this gives you a nice idea of what the fly will look like once that glossy head is all done which you don't have to have on there if you want to fish just fish these by the way uh, but it does look awfully nice So that's the wizard. Again, a really, really nice pattern. It is a typical kind of Carrie Stevens pattern, has a lot of the, the uh, classic components and tying techniques that uh, she incorporated in many of her long streamers. Uh, I like the Black Max. It has a nice contrast to it, and uh, it's a, a good fly for darker water, muddier water, I would say, should say. Um, and uh, yellow shows up pretty well uh, around here for us. So it's a fun fly to fish and um, just as much fun to tie. So there's the third in the Carrie Stevens the series, the Black Max. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and not only learned a new pattern, but maybe learned some new techniques and a few new skills. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button below. You can support Dressed Irons by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are published. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, remember, it's fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. <laughs>